Mike's thoughts. Man hour, man hour, man hour nation. Good afternoon. My thoughts today. Mr. Sam Howe has officially, that's right, he has officially been put at number one depth chart on the Washington Commanders football team. He will, quote, in theory, be starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders this year. And I said, and I'm going to quote him, I am going to give it everything that I have for this opportunity. Damn right you're going to give it everything you have for this opportunity. What have you been doing the last year? You've been kind of half-assing it? Come on, man. We don't want to hear that. We want to say, this is my job, and you're going to have to pry it out of my dead cold fingers before you think you have a chance of getting it. Like, like legit. Come pry it out of my hands, because it's not going to happen. Sam Howe, have a little bit more of a uh, in your voice when you speak too, man. Have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Just say, well, I'm going to give it everything I got. Shut up with that, man. I'm bringing it, baby. That's what they want to hear. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. We're going to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what the people want to hear, Sam. They don't want to hear it. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's like, it'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet? Man, our nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour After Dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know what I'm coming to the same boys talking what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talking about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four in the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We come alive, all three speaks go. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakasha here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the blog section. Of course, check out the merchandise section as well. Takeaway 22 merch is live over there every day, guys. 22 Americans take their lives, and we are here to help raise awareness and all proceeds from the Takeaway 22 merch do go to the Kalahar Project to help with suicide awareness in the military community. Takeaway 22 merch, guys, is live right now over at manhourradio.com. Click on the merch page, scroll down, and you'll see all of our merch down there. But the Take 22 merch right now is the featured merch over there. Also, today's episode is brought to you by Betstamp. Head over to betstamp.app forward slash group. His link is in the description. Use promo code MANHOUR. And with the pro code, promo code MANHOUR, guys, they will give you, that's right, not match, not, not this, this, this. They will give you the minimum deposit of every sports book that you sign on, sign up for. That's right. They'll give you the money. So when you find up, sign up for a fan duel, bada bing, bada boom, $20 in your PayPal account right then, right there. And then you're ready to bet. It is a beautiful thing. Betstamp.app, promo code MANHOUR, guys. Check it out. It is the best line shopping app out there. And that is how you win big money is by line shopping. Because every sports book has different um, odds, right? Different odds. So as of like right now, it is a, let's say, plus 100 on Barstool for the Seahawks to win the NFC East, or sorry, West. Over there on uh, Bet GM, Bet uh, Grand G GMC or whatever it is, right? It is a plus 150. So you got better odds or more money, more payout for uh, Bet MGM. So, guys, with that being said, it is what, Thursday, April 20th. Happy Stoner's Day, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. But we are officially one week away from the NFL draft, and myself and Combs will be live at Bourbon Street, 118 Bourbon or Market Street at Bourbon Street Live. G guys, we will be there live, raw, uncut, covering all the first round of the NFL draft. We'll be there about 5 o'clock Central Time, 
getting our drink on, eating some food. So come, come and join us and hang out. Uh, it is filling up fast. Uh, they have 60 tables already reserved and there's only 10 left. So if you guys want to reserve a table, get it done. Get it done right now. But it is if and then Thursday, guys. And let's go ahead and jump right on into it on this Thursday edition of Man Hour. Forgot to push. I always forget to do that. But it is what it is. The first if and then statement of the night is going to go out to Tua Tugavavola. After his last year with all those concussions, well, all those because he only had two two concussions and he and he pretty much missed the whole season. He said, and I quote, "I considered retirement." So, guys, if Tua would have retired from the Miami Dolphins this season, then what? Then the Miami Dolphins would have been all in on Lamar Jackson. If Tua would have retired, we would have seen probably Lamar Jackson as a Miami Dolphin. Let's just be flat out honest, honest, honest about it. The Miami Dolphins have already been rumored to Lamar Jackson a couple years ago, right? And then now, if Tua wouldn't have been there, it just it just makes sense. It's it's kind of of that match made in heaven, maybe, right? Kind of the same playing style. Maybe a little bit more dynamic on the running game. Uh, they have the receivers. They have the the the, the defense are like around them. It just it, it would kind of make sense. Would that revive Lamar Jackson's career? No, he would still be probably a, a one and done in Miami. But I I want to talk more about this to a considering retirement. We have heard it from many athletes, myself included. When the thought of retirement comes into your head like you don't want to uh, prepare for the offseason or pre- prepare for the season. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. The hardest thing in the NFL is to prepare. Your, your physical body is the last to go. Your mental mindset of the NFL game is the first to go. That is why many players – retire you're like oh you got a couple years left in yada 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 well just it is hard to mentally prepare for a game week after week after week it is hard to prepare for a game april 19th when voluntary minicamp has started for a september 1st game it, it, it just it is it is very very mentally toxic or taxing i should say and with that being said i've heard it from coaches i heard it from my dad i heard it from my granddad once you consider retirement, that there is nothing else to consider. You already have one foot out the door if that if that thought has even creeped in your head. And I and once that thought comes across your comes into your mind, it is time to hang it up. Once you start to consider retirement, it is time to hang it up. And that is speaking from a person that considered retirement and then came back for a year and then retired like the next year. That 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 next year was the worst year of, of my life. I hated going to practice. I hated going to the meetings. I hated going to the gym. I hated doing this, this, and this. And it and it kind of made me resentful of the game that I grew up playing, enjoying, and loving. And I still love to to this day, but it took a while for me to regain that love, to regain that trust, you know, it's like it, like et cetera. So to uh, speaking from a person that has been in your shoes, speaking from things that I've heard around the world and the NFL and the coaching world and parents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If that thought has creeped into your mind, it is just time to walk away. It is time to walk away if that mind has even remotely creeped into your mind. I just want to put it out there. And if you disagree, guys, let me know. Like, maybe he is just saying that just to say it. Like, I don't know. But from past experiences, it is uh, you speak your truth 100% when you're talking about that kind of stuff. Moving on. I have released my NFC West pre-draft rankings, how I think each team is going to finish. I do have the Seahawks sitting at number one over the San Francisco 49ers. And this is because I don't know who this 49ers quarterback is going to be. 
Is it going to be Trey Lance? Is it going to be Brock Purdy? Is it going to be Sam Darnold? Is it going to be? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. So if the Seahawks win the West, then what? If the Seahawks win the West, guys, it is not because they are going to win the West, per se. It is because the San Francisco 49ers are going to lose the West. Obviously, the 49ers are probably the best team on paper in the NFC West. I will give you that. They are better across the board. They're better at the whole receiver core. They're better at tight end. Off offensive line, maybe. They're better at defense. They're better at special teams, right? But... That ultimate it factor is the quarterback position. And we don't know who the 49ers quarterback is moving forward. So if the Seattle Seahawks win the NFC West, it is because the quarterback play of the San Francisco 49ers was subpar. It was subpar at the best, right? It just, it is what it is. They don't know who the quarterback is going to be. There's going to be a three-horse race for the starting position, possibly two at like after the draft, but that is yet to be to be determined. But this the Seahawks have the best rounded team right now in the NFC West from top to the bottom. Now, if and I say if the 49ers find the starting quarterback and they stick to their starting quarterback, they will probably run the West. Whether it be Brock Purdy, whether it be Trey Lance, whether it be Sam Darnold. It, it it doesn't matter. I, th I think they are a plug-and-play, but that starter needs the confidence going into the season. Like, hey, this is, this, is, this is my team. Like, I have to, like, basically die on the field to lose my starting job. And right now, none of those players have that confidence. That is why the 49ers will finish second. The Seahawks will finish first. Moving on. Speaking of quarterback play... In San Francisco, Trey Lance has been the trade talk of the town since the NFL Combine. For the 49ers are fielding calls about Trey Lance. I want to make it clear that they're not making the calls, but they are fielding the calls. A couple teams that have been in the mix are the Vikings, Lions, and the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans probably make the most sense. But if Trey Lance doesn't get traded, then what? What is the ultimate smack in the face as any type of person, whether it be in relationships, whether it be at school, whether it be on the football field? It's, it's, it's being that second choice, right? And when you start to become a trade topic, that basically tells me that you don't want me. You don't think I fit your system. You don't want me. There's a little bit of love, love, loss, et cetera. I, 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 I'm just not going to give my full effort to you. Now, Trey Lance could be a different breed. He is only uh, his fourth year in the league, third, third year going into the league, and he is competing for a starting position. I get that. But in the back of Trey Lance's head, he's not like, man, even if I get the starting job in San Francisco, if I throw an interception, am I done? If I take a sack, am I done? He is going to be playing with the punch, with the such puckered butthole that he 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 is not going to be able to perform at all. Even if he is the greatest quarterback of all time, right? He is not going to be able to perform at the level that he wants because it's consistently in the in the back of his head. So if Trey Lance doesn't get traded by the San Francisco 49ers, then he will ultimately be a bust. He will ultimately be a bust because of the simple fact of he's going to be consistently looking over over his shoulder. He is going to be consistently waiting for that last domino to fall. He is going to be consistently making, oh, did I step on the wrong crack on the way to work? Did I do it just it is walking on eggshells at the at the end of the day. If if you are fielding calls about a possible trade. Yes, I understand his and stand his stand stand and stand his business, and he needs to come to work and do his best, like all the like all the time. I get it, but welcome to the real world. It doesn't always work like that. It is like when you're in a relationship, guys. Like 
let's say you're on Tinder, you're swiping left, you're swiping right, right? And you find this girl, you guys start chit-chatting, and she's like, yeah, I'm going on dates with, like, other guys, yada, yada, yada. I'm busy tonight, whatever, yada, yada, yada. When she says, oh, I'm busy Saturday night, and then all of a sudden she texts you, like, Saturday afternoon, hey, I opened up, you want to go hang out? No, I don't want to hang out. I I was your second, I was your second choice. <laughs> like, no, no. Like, I don't care if this guy bailed on you or you bailed on him or whatever. Like, no, I don't want to be your second choice. Like, it's just, I don't know. It is, I mean, some, some people are like, oh, that, that, that is a compliment. She broke off the plans because she wanted to hang out with you. No, the guy probably broke off plans with her. She was not going to break out those plans for that free meal. Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest about that. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Calvin Ridley says he is one of the better receivers in the NFL. As you guys know, Calvin Ridley has been officially traded to the Atlanta Falcons this season, and we'll be teaming up with Desmond Ritter and Kyle Pitts and um, the other guy, uh, name slip in mind right now. But the Falcons got a pretty good little core happening right there, a nice little young core. But like I said, Calvin Ridley says he is one of the better receivers in the NFL, if not top five. So with that being said, if Calvin Ridley is one of the better receivers this year in the NFL, then what? If he is one of the better receivers of, of the NFL this season, the Falcons will win the South. The South is a very wide open bottom feeder division. Let's just call it, let's just call it spade, a spade, a spade, a spade. Right? It's basically a race to eight wins. Who 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 can get to eight wins first? And make the uh, make the playoffs. The Falcons' defense is pretty good. I wouldn't say top notch, but they're definitely not bottom tier. They are right there in the thick of things, right in the thick of it, in the thick of it. <laughs> but to add a top receiver to that offense, it is going to open up Kyle Pitts. It is going to let Desmond Ritter relax a little bit. It is going to open up that running game. When you have to worry about a top receiver in the NFL on your team, that rotates the safety over. You got to play a little bit more man or cover two coverage. Like you like a lie. You have to really focus on things, and then that takes away the focus from the front seven, and therefore open up the running game. Yet it, it, it is just a domino effect. It is a chain reaction. So Calvin Ridley, I hope you are a top receiver in the league for all of those Falcons fans out there. I hope. You can do good, good things. I hope you can do this, this, and this. But do not count the egg, the chickens before the eggs hatch. You still haven't played for a full season. You still really haven't made yourself that known. Let's just be honest about it. Sorry, and I misspoke. It is the Jaguars he is playing with. My bad. I totally, he was traded from the Falcons to the Jaguars. My bad. I forgot. Well, I, I didn't forget. I just mis, misread. But, yeah, he, he he is, I don't think he's even the top receiver on his, like, on his team. Like, like Arthur Brown says, he is trying to hype himself up. He's not even a top 15. He's not even a top receiver on, on his team, to be honest. He might be second. Might be second. It's just, I don't know. But everything that I said about the Falcons, take it back. I misspoke. I totally forgot he was not on the Falcons any, like, like anymore. It's been one of those days, boys. It has been one of those days. My internet is messing up. It's just, oh, I cannot believe I just totally F that up. <laughs> Come on. I, I literally have it right here. Jags. Calvin Ridley says he's one of the greatest receivers. And I no, it's the Falcons. What? Buck, trust your notes. Trust the trust the notes, man. Here, can you guys see it? Trust the notes, right? Trust the script. I got Kenny Gardner around it today, guys. 
kindergarten roundup. My son is officially becoming a man. Tear to the buck household. But guys, that's all I got for today. It's been a slow day in the NFL. Combs and I are prepping for the draft day. So if you guys are in the, in the, in the Chicago area on first round draft night, one week away next Thursday, swing on by to 115 Bourbon Street. We'll be there. Bourbon Street Live. Live Raw Uncut crew will be there. We'll, we'll, we'll be giving away t-shirts. We'll be giving away some hats, some hoodies, some beanies, some bet stamp swag, and bet stamp is supposed to be there as well. Give you guys even more credit when you guys sign up for the bet stamp. If you use promo code MANOUT. But I'm out.